on Koshi's Business Builders, making the most of going online. Important tips on designing your business website to attract sales. Plus, a banging bod in just 45 minutes. The man behind the fitness craze sweeping the nation. And his journey is so inspiring. Young Australian of the Year, Paul Vasiliev, on how to turn dreams into a business reality. Hello and welcome to Koshi's Business Builders. Does your small business have a website? If not, why the hell not? If so, is it working properly and attracting new customers? Morford Vale Family Practice in Adelaide needed help. It not only wants to stand out online, but make the appointment booking process easy for patients. So we sent in SNAP's online expert, Andrew Osborne, to point them in the right direction. Can I have a look in your ear? Dr Lau is doing what he does best, checking up with one of his youngest patients. He's one of nine doctors at Morford Vale Family Practice, which has been operating in Adelaide for 35 years. <laughs> it's a thriving local practice, but the business website is outdated and needs to be more relevant for customers. Andrew Osborne is helping practice manager Wendy Head get up to speed. Now, you've already got a website and you're looking to revamp it. What's your main aim and strategy moving forward with the new website? Well, the website was established a few years ago. It hasn't been touched since then. It's really old, outdated, unprofessional. Um, and we've started online appointments, so I'd really like to have that feature in my, on a new website. Have you looked at other medical practices' websites to see what they're doing online? Yes, um, I have um, looked through a few. Um, they're not a lot different to what we've got, but I think we could be doing a lot better. Have patients given you any ideas? No. We'll occasionally get someone uh, make comment that they can't book online. Because I live locally, I get a lot of feedback out and about, and um, I do get those comments sometimes, which is helpful. So from your perspective, how important is it for the practice to move forward with your online space, with your website? Oh, very important in this day and age. Over the years, there's been so many changes in the health sector and this is just one of the changes that we feel that we need to make um, to improve our services to our patients. Have you told your patients that you're getting a new website looked at to be redesigned? Not a brand new one. We've always advertised the fact in a very mild way that we have a website, but once we get a new one up and running, we will um, be more aggressive in our advertising. But I need you to give us guidance um, in the enhancements and what you would recommend for us to do. Absolutely. Studies show that about 46% around that actually view the website design as very important in a business's credibility. And about 61% uh, say that if they don't access uh, a website on a mobile device, they won't go back there again. So the actual look and feel of your website to be operational and look good on all devices, on all platforms is very important. When it comes to website design, what is really important? What do you find important for customers? Well, Wendy, looking at your current site at the moment, it looks a bit old and tired, and when you view it on, a, say, a mobile device, it's not easy to read, it's not easy to access the information. But with a new Snap website solution, we make sure all our websites look great on all devices, on all platforms, laptops, desktop, tablets, and mobile devices. And that's crucial to make sure that the visitor experience on any device that they're looking up your website is clear and easy to understand and get the right information to take action on your website. So how secure uh, will the website be? Working in the medical sector, that's very important to us. Good question, Wendy. We make sure all our website solutions are in a reliable and safe environment. They are securely hosted and maintained and we adhere to secure website standards. Uh, as, as well as us, your SNAP local team, we're there to guide and support you through your journey with your new website. Andrew and Wendy have nutted out the basics. Coming up, the fundamentals of website design and implementation. Do you know you may be legally obliged to let clients know about a data breach? Until now, it's been largely voluntary for a business to notify individuals about their personal information being compromised. But with identity theft cases on the rise, the federal government put more safeguards in place and amended the Privacy Act. 
Many Australian businesses, both large and small, must report a data breach so customers can cancel credit cards or change passwords. If a small business owner fails to report, they could be hit with a personal fine of up to $360,000. If you're concerned about the costs and blow to your reputation from a data breach, help protect your business by taking out cyber insurance. If your data's hacked, cyber insurance can pay your costs of responding, including customer notification costs, as well as your loss of revenue. To understand your risks and help choose the right cover for your small business, contact a steadfast insurance broker today. I'm Gail Black, owner of Cessnock West News Agency, a family-run business. We're supporting Koshy's Business Builders campaign for optimism. There's never been a better time to be in business. Today, we're helping a medical practice revamp its website. Let's check back in with the team at Morfitt Vale Family Practice and our expert from SNAP, Andrew Osborne. There are plenty of checkups happening here, not only on patients, but the business website too. What are the benefits of having a lovely up-to-date website for our business? Yeah, to look more professional online, but it's also about your practice promoting your services, educating your target audience, but also making sure that potential uh, patients and your existing patients can now book online. You know, your website's about being your online sales tool. So it's an opportunity to really promote your website so that that audience can actually engage with your website. And it's then targeting your potential clients becoming ongoing patients. So when it comes to the design, I believe there's certain colours that are appealing to people, um, calmness, etc. Do you have any ideas there? Look, the design and the layout of your website is very important. So our designers will really make sure that the branding and the colour scheme that we choose to do for your website really gives you the opportunity to make your business stand out online, make sure that that engages the website visitor and make them to take action. For the purpose of the branding and the colours, we'll make sure that the colours like blue and green, which are part of your logo, uh, are used with the branding to really capitalise on making sure we get your message across. Should we also get personal and introduce each of our staff members? Absolutely. Your website is a window to your business 24-7. This gives an opportunity with your audience to actually engage with your website, check out a name to a face on there, and it makes them feel a bit more comfortable and at ease when they come into your practice. We have monthly health topics, so we'll be able to advertise them on a monthly basis, won't we? On your website and through email campaigns using the database marketing tool, uh, you'll be promoting everything on your website that all your target audience will be able to read and communicate and engage with. So how do we make it easy to navigate? I think that's a must. It's important to have a, a very clear menu that's got clear headings that can be easily read and also make sure that the call to actions are strategically placed in your design so they can be easily accessed and actioned upon. As you can probably guess, I'm a beginner at all this. As time goes on, are you going to be able to make suggestions to me to enhance and evolve the website? Yes, at Snap, we will be your online partner. So we want to see your business grow online. So we'll be making sure that you'll be capitalising. We want to empower you so that you manage the website and we'll guide you every step of the way to make sure that you're doing your everything you can to get the most out of your website, which is your online sales tool. So, when it comes to designing a website for your business, choose colours that match your logo. The website is your online sales tool, so make sure information is clear and easy to understand. Also, check the site can be navigated on all devices, including a smartphone. Lastly, refresh it often to keep customers engaged. That should help create some website eye candy so Morfitt Vale Family Practice really stands out in the future. Wow. It's now time for our Pillars of Success segment. Let's check in with Justin Herald to see how best to design a marketing strategy. Today we're going to talk about using the best marketing strategy that you can ever use, your customers. 
The unfortunate thing that I see all the time in the marketplace these days, especially in small business, is they underutilize their customer database. I'm not talking about spamming them, I'm not talking about bombarding them with emails every single day. I'm talking about giving people service to a point where they rave about your business. You as a business owner, the best asset you have right now are your customers, nothing else. The one thing your customer has these days is one thing more than ever they've ever had before. You know what that is? Choice. So if you don't look after your customers, they'll go somewhere else. So when you look after your customers, they'll start spreading the word. When they start spreading the word, word of mouth will grow your business. There's a new one too, word of mouse. So when you're looking after your customers, they'll go and tell their social media friends, their, their contacts. What that does, it grows your business and improves your marketing reach. So give it a shot and make sure you look after your customers. Still to come, the man behind the franchise fitness craze sweeping Australia and the world. Hi guys, I'm Paul Vassiliff, founder of the Couture label Paolo Sebastian, and I'm also the 2017 Young Australian of the Year. When I first started on my journey, I was told that my dreams wouldn't be possible, but thankfully enough, I've been able to achieve those dreams. So here are my top tips for achieving your goals. My first tip would be have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. I always had a very clear vision of my goals set out from as early as 16 years old, and I'm still working towards those goals. So I think it's really important that everyone has a clear vision of where they want to go. And there's a great saying that Set your goals in concrete, but your plans in sand, because you have to allow for change and you never know where this journey is going to take you. And I've certainly found that to be very much true with my journey. Um, my second tip would definitely be, be your absolute best self that you can possibly be. So each and every day, and it's not easy, I try to be the best person that I can be and the best version of myself. And I try to work a little bit harder than I did the day before. My third tip would be stay true to yourself. It's very easy to be deterred or um, have other people influence your decision making, but I think it's really important to always go with your gut instinct and be true to yourself and, and what feels right for yourself and, and to make decisions for the right reasons. Some great advice there from Paul Vassala from Palo Sebastian. He's a great young entrepreneur, isn't he? Well, now to an entrepreneur, another one who spotted a gap in the fitness industry and really went for it. Rob Deutsch is the founder of F45 Training, one of Australia's fastest growing franchises. Here's the man behind the brand. My advice would be, if you have an idea and you're keen on doing it, do it. For many years, I was working in finance and I thought about launching something like F45 and I deliberated and deliberated. And when I finally made the decision to go out and do it, I was the happiest person on earth. I had a look at different concepts around the world and things that were working and things that weren't working. But one thing that I really realised was normal commercial gyms where people arrive with their earphones on, with no community basis, where they don't make friends and they don't get an experience from their workouts was really dying. And the average attendance around the world for normal commercial gyms is once a month. So I found that there was a fundamental flaw in gymnasium businesses where people were signing up for their memberships and not arriving. So I wanted to create something that was fun, energetic, super innovative workouts where clients could literally come, make friends and feel part of the community. Even when you walk into a studio, the trainers literally click the screens on and the session runs for 45 minutes for them from start to finish. All the exercises are preloaded. We send this out to every single studio around the world. We're now introducing avatar technology whereby a client will enter the studio, the screen will recognise them, they'll have their own customised jersey, it follows them all around the room, it checks their heart rate and they can actually see at which station where their heart rate spiked, where it didn't, so where they can focus for the next session. We've got clients that burn you know, upwards of 700 calories in 45 minutes, so you don't need any longer than that. You've just got to be smart the way you train 
and you shouldn't eat any longer than 45 minutes. Look, I don't think we ever imagined it would take off the way that it has. We obviously had grand plans to take this globally, but to be in 33 different countries and have sold a thousand franchises in four years, we never could have dreamed of that. We're opening in some really exciting places like South Africa, Uruguay, Peru, to name a few. So it's pretty hard to, to grow any faster than we've grown, but I think Europe is where the focus is for us now. North America, UK are really exploding at the moment. Europe's just starting, so it'll be nice to see a lot more countries in Europe pop up over the next 12 months. Rob Deutsch has certainly come a long way in a relatively short period of time, simply because he spotted that gap and he took his chance. While the idea of a truly paperless office is certainly appealing, it can be tricky to break our addiction to that pulpy goodness. So how can you cut down on the white stuff? Well, for starters, eliminating printed bills and bank statements will reduce paper waste and make it easier to file online. Switch to paperless billing by changing the settings on your online supplier accounts or make a phone call. Now, while it sounds devious, removing some of your office printers will help break the habit of printing things out. Just be sure to keep the printers that are the least expensive to run in terms of ink and consumables. Also, set your printers to double-sided or duplex printing mode to get more from each sheet. Also, try reducing the need to make printouts, memos, and handouts by using a company intranet, wiki, or collaboration tool for sharing the phone directory, key contacts, and announcements. Signing or annotating documents often involves printing them out before emailing them back. Avoid the fuss by creating a digitized signature with a webcam or mobile phone and Adobe Acrobat. Simply drag your signature into a document or PDF. And with tablets and touchscreen equipped laptops, you can annotate documents with a stylus. Now don't forget that your mobile phone is a handy document scanner. Simply use the Notes tool in iOS 11 or select Scan in the Google Desktop Docs app in Android. The Adobe Scan app is also a great tool for digitizing docs and sharing with others. And while you're at it, your accountants should be sending your BAS and tax documents to you via an online portal where you can review and then sign digitally. If not, you know, maybe it's time to review their rates. Now it's time for Ask Koshi. This week, an online interior design business got in touch wanting to know what funding options to look at when scaling. Hi, I'm Emily Carding, co-founder of Designbox. We're an online interior design marketplace connecting homeowners with designers all over Australia. We've been up and running for about a year now and have happy repeat customers, so we are ready to scale our business. So my burning question is, are we at the right point in our business journey to seek external funding, or should we try and continue to bootstrap? Love to know what the pros and cons of each of those options are. Thank you so much. Oh, great question, Emily. Firstly, congratulations on getting past the one-year mark. You've got to be doing something right, especially if you're looking to scale the business. Now, for those who don't know, bootstrapping is when an entrepreneur starts up a business with very little capital and funds it themselves out of savings and new revenue. Good thing about bootstrapping is that you have no debt and you have full control over all decisions. The limitations to bootstrapping, however, can be the financial risk and strain on you and not having the resources to grow your business as quickly as you'd like. You can solve that problem by debt, or raising capital. Debt, of course, means getting a loan from a financial institution, putting up security, paying interest, but keeping control. All of the big banks have dedicated small business funding arms, which also provide education and support when it comes to managing your business and also your cash flow. Raising capital means attracting other investors who expect a return and often a say in the running of your business. The first type is an angel investor, where an individual, usually with a fair amount of personal wealth, invests in a business they believe will grow and make profits down the line. Often, they're entrepreneurs themselves, which may also bring expert advice, support, mentoring to the table, which is fabulous. Angels are often found through referrals or networking, so you also really need to get your presence out there to lock this sort of funding in. Another popular way to raise capital for your expansion is via crowdfunding. 
this is a good option if you don't want to give up too much ownership in your business. Crowdfunding is basically a system where a lot of people give small amounts of money to help fund an idea or grow a new business. They're passionate about, about what it is you do and they're also eager to support you. Now, you usually have to offer a discount on the product or service you're offering to sort of entice them in. Another option is venture capital. This type of funding comes via a professionally managed fund or a sophisticated investor. It's usually if you're seeking a large amount. The downside to venture capital funding is that you'll usually be required to part with a pretty significant equity stake in your business. They also end up with quite a bit of control over the decision-making process. So be sure you're ready to give that up. Always remember, Emily, that no matter what option you choose, do your homework and read the fine print before signing any contracts. Look, I hope that helps. Good luck. Let us know how you go. Coming up next week, we're talking insuring your risks, finding the right policy and cover for your unique business. See you next week for more Koshy's Business Builders.